Hello and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the fifth grade concept of simplifying expressions and order of operations. This is standard 5.4F in the great state of Texas and we're using item number 26 off the Redesign Practice Online Star Test. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause the video, work this problem out on your own, unpause it, and we will look at our answers together. So we have this expression here that we simply need to simplify, which means let's go ahead and use our order of operations. So when I'm thinking of my order of operations, I'm thinking, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. That's how I remembered it. So the first layer that we always take care of are the parentheses. Now, we won't see it here in fifth grade, but if we do see exponents, that comes next. The third layer can be multiply or divide. They are inverse operations, so that means they're equal, they're just opposite. If you see division before multiplication, left to right, you can do that first. Same with your add, subtract. Add and subtract are inverse operations. They are equal. If you see subtraction first, go ahead and do that first. So when we're looking at this, I'm going to rewrite this here. I've got 5. I've got a bracket. Okay, so brackets are like parentheses, except they're the second layer, right? So your parentheses uh, are the inside, and then the brackets are at the outside. So we're going to deal with that second. I've got a 6.2 minus. Now here's the interesting part. It's 3 parentheses 1.6. But there's nothing inside the parentheses except for a number 1.6, 1 and 6 tenths. So when you see a parentheses being used and there's just a number parentheses number, there's nothing in between, we actually use this to symbolize multiplication. There's a lot of different ways to symbolize multiplication and we don't always show it just because that x sometimes becomes a variable and it becomes confusing and we don't use a dot because that can look like a decimal point. So we just kind of omit multiplication all, all together. So watch this. I can rewrite this as 3 times 1.6. That's what that's showing right there. So I'm going to just kind of get rid of that parentheses. So I've got 5 and then I've got a bracket. I've got to take care of 6 point. 2 minus 3 times 1.6. Okay, so inside this bracket, which is what I'm dealing with first, let's take care of this parentheses. Step 1, we're going to take care of the multiplication. Step 2 will be that subtraction. Then the parentheses, we can kind of collapse. So let's look at 3 times 1.6. Let's make it a 2 by 1. I'm going to ignore the decimal point. I'm just going to think it's 16 times 3. So 6 times 3 is 18. Care that 1. 3 times 1 is 3. Add that 1 is 4. Now I bring my decimal back in. I've got one digit behind the decimal in my factor, so one digit behind the decimal in my product. So I'm going to rewrite my second row here. 5, bracket, keep everything else the same, but I'm just going to rewrite what I did. The 3 times 1.6 I made 4.8. All right. So now let's take care of this subtraction because that's the only thing left inside the parentheses. 6.2 minus 4.8. That shouldn't be that difficult. So we need to regroup here. Let's bring that decimal straight down. You do have to line up the decimals when you subtract, just not when you multiply. 12 times 8 is 4. 5 times 4 is 1. 1 1.4. Okay. So let's rewrite this. I'm going to say 5 parentheses, 1.4, 1 and 4 tenths. And remember, when you see two numbers on either side of parentheses, that means we're multiplying. So we just need to multiply. 1.4 times 5. So that's going to be 20, carry the 2. 70, but I have one digit right there, so 7.0, or my answer here is a.